in cell differentiation, there are several things that you have to consider. So, you have a single cell organism, and the single celled organism is very all round. It has no specific qualities which allow to excel in any particular form. I mean, you have you have an exchange surface, but it's not optimalised, and neither has it got the correct number of ribosomes or mitochondria which would allow it to excel in one single function. It's very much a jack of all trades, master of none. However, if you look at a nerve cell, the nerve cell is very long and thin and optimised for communication, but it can only fulfil this function, and as if it were put by itself, it wouldn't function very well. And therefore, it has to be inside a body or a multicellular organism, and these and these optimized ex, these optimized cells help to fulfil certain roles within the body. As old cells contain all genes, you have to have a process which allows cells to differentiate, and therefore you have the genes are either turned off or turned on. In stem cells, every single gene is turned on, but in a, in a process called differentiation, it's so certain genes are turned off or on to um, allow certain processes to be carried out. And as a result, the cells are specialised for their function within the body. For example, bone cell is fairly inactive and therefore it won't have many mitochondria because it doesn't need to do much activity and therefore it won't need much energy. But a sperm cell on the other hand will need many mitochondria as it requires a lot of energy for movement and therefore it needs more respiration so more, so more mitochondria are required. Similarly, certain organs similarly you have to look at tissues as well. So if you look at the epithelium tissue you'll see that they're they're long so they cover a large surface area and they're thin so there's a, so a very small pathway for diffusion. Also they have many secretory surfaces for either immuno immunological effects or for immunological effects or just secreting acids which are vital for the role. And tissues can form organs and when you have several tissues, several different types of tissues, you form an organ. For example, the stomach has has a sto has muscle muscle lining, is a muscle lining tissue, and this tissue helps to contract and churn churn the, the, the contents of the stomach. And you also have the the epithelium of the stomach or the inner lining which secretes stomach acid which helps to digest the food within the stomach and also forms a protective layer around it. You also have a connecting layer which forms all the tissues together. However, the, in plant cells they have, in, such as the leaves, the, the plant structure of the leaf is, also has many different specialised tissues. You have the xylem which, which, flows, which makes water flow to the specific cells within the leaf. You have the phloem, which takes metabolic material and transports it to the leaf while also ridding it of waste and transporting it around the plant. You have the mesophyll cells, which are soft and spongy and allow diffusion to happen. And you also have the palisade tissue, which helps absorb sunlight. And that's pretty much all there is to know about cell differentiation.